Hello fans of Glasgow Sport. This programme is dedicated to explaining how the Queen's Park Football Club, the single most important football club in the world, were instrumental in the invention of the modern sports stadium. I created the programme to help the students of St Andrew's Secondary in Cantine with their Higher Scottish Studies History Unit on how Glasgow founded modern world football. This very confident group of Glaswegians sitting in front of their pavilion are the members of Queen's Park. This programme looks at one of the many reasons why they stand above all other clubs. In this particular case, their creation of the world's first dedicated international football ground. When football was in its infancy, many of the things we take for granted did not exist or had not yet been considered. However, the world's first football international in 1872 had galvanised the Scots and Queen's Park in particular. As the organisers of the world's first international against England, Queen's Park provided all 11 Scottish players. They had been obliged to rent the cricket pitch from their friends at the West of Scotland Club, who were based at Hamilton Crescent in Partick. There was a simple reason for this. No one had an enclosed football ground to offer up for the purpose. The idea of the modern football stadium did not yet exist. The success of the game led to Queen's Park immediately planning to create a ground specifically for the playing of major matches. But now we have to jump back a few decades before 1872 to solve the problem of there being no football stadium for any sort of game, let alone an international, we have to move to the other side of Glasgow when it wasn't even part of the city. The south side in the 1850s was mostly farmland. The extraordinary expansion of Glasgow into the fourth largest city in Europe behind London, Berlin and Paris was well into the future dotted around the fields with the houses and mansions of the well-to-do. The old toll road to Kilmarnock and Stranra ran through Cross Hill and Mount Florida on its way to Cathcart. You can see Pathhead Farm, later swallowed by the Queen's Park, on the left-hand side. The rising industrial strength of Scotland is represented by Govan Colliery in the top right-hand corner. Now Queen's Park had been playing in this area for many years, as the eastern half of the park had opened in 1862. It was one of the few areas of flat, open ground where you could play games. It was used by many teams, mostly lost to history, and was very crowded. You can see the second Hamden from 1884 on the right. This will be the subject of another programme, after we have looked at that interesting blank patch on the map on the western side of the railway line. In the middle of this picture is the Lodge of the Deaf and Dumb Institution. Built in 1869, Queen's Park paid the gatekeeper of the institution to look after their equipment. This was not satisfactory. Football needed a home of its own. Here's what the area looks like today. The gatehouse was a listed building, but it was knocked down decades ago. It was behind the new Victoria Infirmary, which was built on a chunk of the recreation ground where Queen's Park once played. Remember that 1850s map? Here it is again, but with the addition of the site of Hampden. Thanks to Graham Brown of the Hampden Bowling Club, we now have a clear understanding of the site of the ground. One of the critical things to know is that the coming of the railway changed the line of the old toll road. It was cut off at the recreation ground when the new Cathcart Road was built. Graham found the only drawing of the first Hamden on the plans in the 1879 application by the Cathcart Railway to build a Cathcart Circle railway line. Note too the site of the toll house because it has a cameo role in the history of world football. The land for the first Hampden was rented from Glasgow City Council. 
they had bought Pathhead Farm in 1857 on which to build the first section of Queen's Park. The first ever game at the stadium was a Scottish Cup match on the 25th of October 1873 when Queen's Park beat Dumbreck 7-0. For the early Hamden games, Queen's paid the man at the toll house at the northeastern corner of Cathcart Road and Prospect Hill Road 20 shillings for looking after the balls and the posts. On that opening day on Saturday 25th of October 1873, Queen's Park had finally created a home for football. The North British Daily Mail commented that Hampden Park is a capital place for football on the turf. With a little care in judicious expenditure, it may easily be made all that can be desired. Another first that day was Queen's Park's appearance in their new strip of black and white hoops, whence came their nickname of the Spiders. Their blue jerseys became the strip of the national team which they had founded. Queen's Park quickly spent £21 on a small pavilion that initially lacked running water and sanitation. The big breakthrough came in February 1878 when Queen's bought the Caledonian Cricket Club's pavilion from their ground at Burnbank, just west of St George's Cross, for £65. It cost £85 to remove the building, with the bill ballooning to £239, 12 shillings and a penny by the time they were finished. Scotland bade farewell to the West of Scotland cricket ground after three matches there and prepared for their new life at the world's first dedicated international football ground. The first England game was played at Hampden on the 2nd of March 1878 and resulted in an unsurprising win for the Scotch professors by seven goals to two in front of a crowd estimated at 10,000. John McDougall of the Vale of Leven became the first man to score a hat-trick in a Scotland international. On the same ground, on the 23rd of March, Scotland squeezed past Wales by the impressive score of 9-0. Just in case you're wondering if Queen's Park really did need to move, then here is your answer. The 1318 to Glasgow Central pulling into Cross Hill Station – just out of shot on the left. And this picture is where things really get interesting. On the right is the pavilion of the Hamden Bowling Club. This institution was founded in 1905 by members of the Palmer D Club, who had been thrown out of their ground a 10 minute walk away on Hamilton Street. Beyond the trees was the second Hamden, where Queen's Park had taken up residence in 1884. However, they moved out to the third Hamden in 1903. They left almost nothing behind for the new tenants, the third Lanark Athletic Club. Let's look at where Hamden would have been. In this modern photograph, we are looking north towards Cross Hill Railway Station, along the line of the old Cathcart Toll Road. Up to 1884, this would have been a T-junction, the toll road would have continued south through what is now the recreation ground and curved back to rejoin the current line of the road at the Prospect Hill Road junction with Cathcart Road. The little stub of the road that is left behind has been renamed Queen's Park Avenue. If we were stood here on the opening day of the first Hamden in 1873, we would have been staring at the back of the goal which is where the big tree on the very left is. The northeast corner of Queen's Park Rec is on the right-hand side of the road. Further confusion for modern historians was added by the creation of the little embankment in the 1880s, which allowed Queen's Drive to be extended across the railway line to a junction with the new Cathcart Road, which now ran parallel to the railway tracks. Queen's Park were good at saving money. When they left the first Hamden in 1883, they brought the roof of the old Caledonian Cricket Club pavilion with them and stuck it on top of their new fancy brick pavilion. The first version had one storey, 
This is the improvement with a meeting and reading room and a gym. We also know that they pretty much demolished a second Hamden when they left. They could not agree a price for the pavilion and stands with the new tenants, the third Lanark. But let us not forget the site of the first Hamden, which had lain idle for almost a decade. At the same time as thirds and queens were having their discussions, the Palmer D Bowling Club were considering their move from Palmer D to the site of the first Hamden. Hamden Bowling Club was created from the membership of Palmer D. It is extremely likely that they knew of and were friends with both the Third Lanark Rifle Volunteers and the Queen's Park Football Club. It is quite possible that, knowing the pavilion at the Second Hamden was going to be knocked down, they nipped in and made a bid for enough materials to build their wee pavilion. Its roof bears a strong likeness to the Caledonian Cricket Club pavilion. The roof had already been moved five times before 1903. Maybe it made one more journey back across the road to its spiritual home. All Hamden bowlers have been brought up with the legend that the roof of their pavilion is the roof of the first Hamden. For a quarter of a century, I viewed this story with amused scepticism. I'm not laughing now. I look forward with great anticipation to Archaeology Scotland carrying out an analysis of that wood above the bowlers' heads. Half of the pitch is under the new chunk of Queen's Drive, the new railway line and the new Cathcart Road, but plenty remains. The bowling club and the small Kingsley Gardens constitute about one third of the playing surface of the world's first purpose-built international ground. If you get off at Crosshill Station, it is a walk of a few hundred metres until you get to Kingsley Gardens and the Greens. As you come to the corner of Queen's Park Avenue and Kingsley Avenue, try and see in your mind's eye the back of that humble wooden pavilion standing amongst the flower beds. Once upon a time, a group of men turned this small stadium in Glasgow into the place where modern world football was founded. Thank you for watching.